September 28, 1867. Glasgow Herald, Glasgow, Scotland. Baby Farming. From the Pall Mall Gazette. Mrs. Jagger of Wood Lane Grove, Tottenham, is a nursing mother of a kind to which we have often directed attention with no particular success. She advertises for children to nurse, usually accompanied by an offer of apartments for any lady who desires to become a mother in perfect retirement. Her business is large. At present, she owns to the care of eight infants, and she believes she has had from 40 to 60 within the last three years. With the parent of her charges, Mrs. Jagger has little communication. Her fees are forwarded by post office order or in postage stamps. The death rate would seem to be high in Mrs. Jagger's household, and it happens that on Tuesday, the coroner opened an inquest on the third child which has died within a comparatively short period within her care. In this instance, the infant had been forwarded to Mrs. Jagger through a solicitor who had seen and answered her advertisement. It was admitted by the solicitor's clerk to be the illegitimate child of a young lady of wealth and position who had threatened to commit suicide if her name was divulged. Of the father, nothing is known. Medical evidence showed that the child was not naturally unhealthy, but it had been badly fed. The stomach was nearly empty, and there was no trace of fat on the body. Now, we do not suggest that in this case there was any foul play with the poor child, nor do we care to inquire what was the meaning of the convulsions into which Mrs. Jagger was thrown by the coroner's mysterious question as to whether she had any children upstairs who were never seen. But it may not be improper to point out that the system of farming out children in this way is one in which, if practiced by persons less humane than Mrs. Jagger, might easily become downright wicked. The parents of such children are not usually sorry to be rid, in a natural way, of the evidence of their shame. Death, in such a case, is often a happy release indeed. And then, what is to be done with babies who are abandoned by their friends altogether and left on nurses' hands, and yet that the care of illegitimate children has become a regular trade cannot be a secret to anyone who reads the advertisement pages of certain journals. It is impossible to misunderstand the meaning of such advertisements as the following, which have appeared, as many as four or five of them and a single impression, in the Daily Telegraph within the last few weeks. A widow has furnished apartments to let for a person during confinement, or would take the charge of one or two children, address Mrs. R., etc. Apartments for a lady, strictly private, ready for immediate occupation, every comfort and careful nursing on very moderate terms, baby linen provided, by letter, EP, post office, etc. How this monstrous system can be arrested is a question demanding earnest consideration. One thing, at any rate, can admit of no dispute, that a heavy responsibility rests on those journals which lend themselves to the promotion of such a trade. August 23, 1879, Reading Eagle, Reading, Pennsylvania. Cruelty to Children. Baby farming in Pittsburgh, infants slowly starving to death. A sad story of guilty shame and possible crime has been brought to light by a Pittsburgh reporter. Agent Dean of the Humane Society was told that a woman who lived on a back alley near St. Andrew's Church on 9th Street was keeping a baby farm. A search was made for the house and at last it was found. An elderly woman was discovered who had charge of three children, one about six months, one a year, and the other three years old. The second child presented a fearful spectacle. It was absolutely nothing but skin and bones. Its hands resembled claws, and its wrists and ankles were not larger in diameter than an ordinary-sized finger ring, while the skin upon its face was drawn tightly 
giving it a wan, pinched, old manish appearance. Its head was covered with scars and partly healed sores. The woman said that the children were all illegitimate. She got $2 a week for boarding them. The mother of the sickly-looking child was said to be a servant girl in Allegheny. The woman said, She brought the child to me some weeks ago and gave me some medicine to give it. I gave the child the medicine and it became very sick and fearfully reduced. I stopped giving it medicine about two weeks ago and it has been much better since. The medicine may have been something injurious, but the mother gave it to me and said a doctor had given it to her. She told me its father was a finisher in the American Iron Works, and if it were not for the child, she could marry another man. The mother of the youngest baby was, according to the woman, a beautiful young lady of 16 who dressed elegantly and evidently belonged to a rich family. The Humane Society will look into the matter at once. January 10, 1894 The Toronto Daily Mail, Toronto, Canada Baby Farmer Sentenced to Death Miss Knorr, who carried on a baby farm at Melbourne and has been systematically strangling the children left to her care for several years, has been sentenced to death at Melbourne. June 30, 1899, Aurora Daily Express, Aurora, Illinois. Romance of a Little Boy, Louisville, June 30. Abandoned by a dissolute mother, rescued by the Kentucky Humane Society from a notorious baby farm, and for five years an inmate of a receiving home for children in this city, little Leslie Davidson has been found to be heir to a portion of the estate of the revolutionary hero, General Hugh Mercer of Virginia, which has recently been in dispute. April 22, 1913. Spartanburg Herald, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Babies taken in payment of board. One baby farm proprietor solved servant problem by making prospective mothers work. By the Associated Press, Chicago, April 21. More evidence of baby juggling in lying in hospitals was dragged from reluctant witnesses today by the Legislative Committee on Home Finding and Maternity Hospitals. One witness admitted that babies were taken from their mothers in payment of board. Another finally stated, that prospective mothers performed household work at his residence when he was accused of having solved the servant problem in this manner. A third superintendent of a baby farm said infants were sent to all parts of the country when a few hours old and without any material investigation of the characters of the foster parents. After a day of difficult questioning, the representatives announced they would investigate the juvenile court from top to bottom, as the surrender of babies is governed by juvenile court statutes. Secretary Morris of the Chicago Orphan Asylum said the contract signed by mothers entrusting children to the institution contains this clause, clause of contract. If I fail to pay board for any six consecutive months, that shall be a full surrender to the asylum. The rule is never enforced, Morris explained. It's like putting a horse in stable, and when you fail to pay for his feed, they sell on you, commented Chairman Thomas Kern. Dr. L.B. Rogers, superintendent of the national institutions, which include an emergency hospital, a maternity home, a medical school, and a night university at one address, was interrogated for five hours, but gave the committee little information. He asserted he kept no books at his quadruple establishment depending entirely upon his memory. He compared himself to Dr. Friedman and Dr. Alexis Carroll. The witness remembered giving a 24-hour-old infant to a couple to take to Los Angeles, but could tell nothing about them. He could not recall the disposition of an infant born at his hospital last Saturday. When confronted with facts gathered by the committee's investigators, he said he had given a baby to the head of a midwife establishment on the South Side, 
Dr. Rogers could not say what had become of any other of the more than 600 infants he has farmed out. Dr. W.S. Briney, superintendent of the Anna Ross Sanitarium, said he gave physicians a 33% commission on business they turned over to him. He insisted it was better for the women that their babies be taken from them.